Exchange enacted the report. A global foreign direct investment flows are set to go through a U-shaped recovery, remaining weak in 2021. The UN agency says that this year's FDI prospects for developing countries is a point of major concern. Earlier, we spoke to enacted Director for Investments and Enterprise, James Khan, for more. The pandemic's uh, negative impact on FDI is being amplified, in fact, due to the, um, uh, the low commodity prices and the dampened uh, demand for raw materials. Um, and these are the additional factors to the pandemic. For the pandemic, of course, um, this is the disruptiveness um, of, um, of the global supply chain that impacted on the foreign affiliates operating in East Africa. Um, in fact, the, uh, the pandemic caused uh, um, a kind of a triple shock, supply demand and the policies. Um, in that sense, according to our uh, preliminary data, the COVID-19 pandemic reduced FDI flows to East Africa in 2020 by 21 percent to an estimated 6.2 billion U.S. dollars compared with the 7.8 billion U.S. dollars in 2019. Um, for example, inflows to Ethiopia declined by 17 percent but was still substantial at 2.1 billion U.S. dollars. Um, the major investment to the country in 2020 were received in the manufacturing, agriculture, hospitality sectors, and uh, FDI inflows uh, were also uh, steady in, uh, in countries like Mozambique, um, despite the fact that there was a decline, a decline was only 6% to 2 billion US dollars as in the implementation of the 20 billion U.S. dollars of planned investment. Um, so, in general, we see that some countries in East Africa weathered the, the, the pandemic storm better compared with other parts of the world. For example, FDI flows into Europe, mm. so almost zero, and to European Union reduced by two thirds. Yes, now just looking at the numbers you've given us as well as uh, the United Nations Agency say that uh, FDA collapsed last year falling by 42% in 2019 to an estimated 859 billion US dollars in 2020. Just to talk to us about these numbers and the predictions for this particular year, 2021. Yeah, uh, global-wise, um, um, the, the recovery momentum uh, will continue to be very weak and um, we only see perhaps... Uh, a kind of uh, bottom out towards the second half of this year and uh, the real um, growth in FDI could start uh, next year. Mm. Um, this is uh, different from the, the forecast on global GDP and the trade which has uh, which have been predicted to be a v-shaped recovery that already started this year um, but for FDI we see a kind of time lag, so the recovery will be likely a V-shape, a U-shape of recovery. Yes, now just looking at the FDI volumes, how enabling and how much of an impact would you say they could actually have towards economic recovery here in the region? Yes, um, given the volume of FDI, it is important for the region because uh, in the region is pretty uh, uh, much an open economy and FDI play a key role there for economic growth, particularly in some large um, uh, Eastern African countries such as Kenya, Ethiopia, Mauritius, uh, Rwanda. Um, so they play an important role um, in, uh, in economic recovery and also in economic growth in general. What are the most ripe sectors, or what sectors would you say are attracting the most um, um, FDIs here into the region? In the, in the region, the most attractive uh, uh, sectors for FDI uh, is, is, is quite a number of them. Mm. In fact, uh, it started with natural resources seeking FDI in the extractive industry, of course, that has been a traditional FDI, but now it's growing into a kind of simple processing of the commodities in addition to the extractive uh, uh, activities. And then efficiency in, 
exported or in the FDI has been increasing significantly recently and will continue to increase. And for example, the horticulture uh, sector that provide uh, an important supply to European market and the garments, the foodware, uh, the travel goods, um, the simple electricity products, and uh, most recently, the PPEs, that is uh, personal protective equipment in light of the, of the pandemic. And in fact, um, a number of foreign affiliates just shifted their um, uh, production from the normal uh, kind of garment, footwear, uh, and simple electricity to the production of, um, of uh, uh, pandemic-related uh, uh, products, uh, the PPEs. So that is a kind of a quick response that play a key role in the region in response to the pandemic. The market seeking investment has been growing very fast, particularly in the services sector, uh, and driven by the digital uh, economy, the ITC, uh, ICT, and also um, finance sector, and this mobile, uh, mobile financial services has been growing very fast. Um, Infrastructure building has been growing also very fast to provide infrastructure for telecom, of, of course, as the retail and tourism. So in these areas, FDI play a key role mm. and will continue to play a key role in economic development and job creation in the region. Yeah, as you said, we've seen a shift and a growth of, in different parts of the economies here in the region. But just give us a glimpse outlook. Fast forward 10 years from now, what will we be looking at? Um, 10 years from, from now, aside from um, those sectors I mentioned in manufacturing and uh, in services, uh, one important um, uh, potential for FDI is uh, sustainable development driven. Mm. Uh, and that relates to the SDGs, the Global uh, Endeavor for Sustainable Development. That will um, stimulate investment and create a lot of um, uh, opportunities for investment, in, in particular in the green and blue economies in the region. And, uh, and we also we have already seen that leaders in the country have positioning the economies there towards the blue economy, towards the green. But this is the, 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 the big uh, kind of shift we'll see FDI into this area. And the potential source is not only traditional multinationals, but also impact investment. As we know that impact investment has been growing very fast. The, sustainable, uh, the sustainability themed uh, investment funds in terms of equity, in terms of green bonds, in terms of social bonds, have been growing very fast and have reached, according to our data, is 1.4 to 1.5 trillion US dollars, and they 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 are they are waiting for pipeline and investment projects in the continent like Africa and in East Africa, uh, for example. So, um, sustainability-driven or sustainable development-driven type of investment is important. Uh, is a potential uh, in the years ahead. The second is that um, um, FDI in digital economy related uh, sectors. So um, the digital economy uh, will play a key role and will continue to play a key, key role in this region. In fact, um, uh, the region has a leapfrog in its um, uh, telecommunication and through the tele telecommunication, the related services is even set an example for advanced countries uh, because of the, 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 the policies and um, uh, the drive for uh, and a fairly con conducive uh, uh, regulatory environment for, for digital economy in the region. Yes, now with growth and development, we've also been seeing the global investment policies have been evolving with time. How are they impacting um, the FTIs coming into the region? Yeah, policy matters. Policy matters because um, it, it ensures uh, attracting the right investment and it ensures to, uh, that investment benefit positively to the country 
it ensures uh, that uh, the, the population, the poor population in the, uh, in, the, in the region benefit from FDI and to minimize the negative impact of, of FDI. Now, at the, at the regional level, I see that this um, uh, um, continent, uh, continental free trade agreement will play a, an increasingly important role. I think the, the trade aspect has been uh, agreed upon and the investment protocol is being negotiated. And once it is done, that will play a key role in promoting, facilitating investment into the region and also intra-regional investment will increase a lot. There are also challenges uh, in the other regions. They also put in place a lot of uh, investment promotion facilitation um, measures and collective measures such as the recent uh, PARCEP the, the, in, in, in the this ASEAN 10 countries plus five, that they also put in place um, um, liberalization, facilitation, promotion, protection measures in, in, in the infra-regional investment. And that will consolidate investment in the region. And, uh, and um, so there are some kind of um, potential competition, but African continent has a lot, uh, a lot of potential. As I mentioned earlier, if, con if countries in, uh, in East Africa um, um, focus uh, well on the sustainable development dimension of the investment policies, and that will attract tremendous FDI into the green and blue economies and in, into the uh, uh, infrastructure for public services. But these sectors are, are, are sensitive also, so government needs to have the policies to ensure that goods and services that are provided by uh, multinational companies are affordable and accessible by the poor because this is public services. So policy matters a lot. Yes. Now, are there optimisms brought about by the COVID-19 vaccine and the rollout plans that have been put in place? Are there increasing activity in this front? Are we seeing maybe a glimpse of hope when it comes to increase in the 2021 outlook? Well, that's, um, that's, that's the right question to ask now. Um, in fact, uh, according to our data, the immediate um, uh, prospect for, for, uh, of FDI for Africa is, is gloomy. Uh, it's not so promising um, as we have witnessed that um, um, the Greenfield investment announcement, that's an indicator for the future uh, FDI flows to the region uh, declined, declined significantly. And these project announcement and also cross-border international investment finance, um, that's what we see with the project finance, also declined. Short-term wise, um, we see the serious negative impact by the COVID-19. 